shall sickness, shall disease, shall tribulation. Hallelujah. But we will declare that nothing will separate you from the love that God has bestowed upon his children. Especially you. Remember that he loves you. And that is the reason why God is giving his only because of his son. And that he whosoever believes in him, he said, We have everlasting life and we love it. Say, My father, my father, my father. let not a call me off from your love. Let not it separate me from your love. Begin to pray. Yes, Lord, we decree and declare nothing, 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 absolutely nothing, nothing shall separate us from the love that you have for us. Nothing shall separate our families, nothing shall separate our walk with you, Lord, our love for you, our passion, our zeal, our hunger, nothing shall separate us. Just for your sake, that you may have abundant life. 
Say, my father, my father. Release your favor upon my life. This week, let me encounter supernatural favor. Begin to pray, begin to pray. Begin to pray, begin to pray. For he became poor that you might be rich. He was let down that you might be left. He was bruised and humiliated that you be humble. He was wounded and he took away the sickness that you might live and that you might have life in that world. Begin to pray, begin to declare. Fear 50 years of the Lord. Father, oh God, Lord, as we humble ourselves this week, Father, by the power of crucifixion and resurrection. Lord, this week, by the power of the atonement, the power that took you from the top, the power that lifted you higher, above heaven, and you and your Father's place. Father, therefore, I declare, and declare as many, O oh God, who have desire of lifting, who have desire of peace, who have desire of healing, Father, O oh God, by all that you have sacrificed. May your children receive belief, may they receive peace, may they receive rest, may they receive favor in all right. Marco Tony Bazaar. Regedes, Katune Bazanda Yabaze, Iko Tony Bazanda Yabaze, Legedebose, Take the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we decree and declare. That this week that your children encounter favor. Amen. May you encounter peace. Amen. May you encounter rest. Amen. May whatever that trouble you, let this week disappear. Amen. By the power of resurrection, yes. by the power of the sacrifice yes. that you have given to us as privilege. Lord, as many who are suffering, as many who are going through one challenges on the other. This week it is over. Amen. It is over in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is over in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray that your love surrenders us. Your love surrenders our family. David said, Who shall I show kindness in the house of Saul? Are there anyone that remain that I may show them kindness? And the Bible says the son of Jonathan, he was still alive. No matter the situation, no matter that he was yeah. late and he was not well, but yet God still showed him kindness. Lord, I decree and declare that this week you show your children kindness in every area that they have expectation. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let it be outpouring of your spirit upon all flesh. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray that tonight bring a counter in the life of your children. Amen. Before end of this week, may you have a big testimony to testify. Amen. Before end of this week, may you experience the love of God Amen. in fullness. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Before end of this week, may you experience healing and deliverance. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, I destroy every agenda of the wicked against this ones and against the fact of FCCI. Anywhere devil is piling up and evil. Father Lord, I thwart it and I destroy it. Amen. I destroy it. Amen. I destroy it. Amen. No one shall mourn in this place. Amen. No one shall cry in this place. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Father, oh God, you are God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for you to do? Father, I decree there is nothing you cannot do. With you, all things are possible. Bringing possibility in the life of this one. I decree that this week it shall become possible. Amen. Whatever that refuses to give you power and give you way, before end of this week, you shall pass over. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. you will cross every limitation. Amen. You will cross every mountain. Amen. You will overcome every challenge. Amen. You will overcome difficulties. Amen. You will jump and pass every gallows. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray 
as you are here, connected to this anointing. May this anointing reach your family. Amen. May this anointing reach whatever that concerns you. Amen. Anything that concerns you, I speak peace and rest. Amen. In the, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray that your children are covered by the blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus your enemy will see your uprising. Amen. They will see your joy. Amen. They will see you rising higher Amen. and higher. Amen. They will see you lifting and lifting and being lifted. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 23 that the Lord prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And in your presence, you shall eat from the table that the Lord has prepared for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And he says, surely the goodness and the mercies of the Lord he shall follow he shall follow your finances he shall follow your business he shall follow whatever that concerns you he shall follow your ministry he shall follow your family all the days of your life forever and ever amen put your hands together for the hallelujah holy spirit we thank you as the hour to hear from your teaching and knowledge and impartation to pray for grace to abide and that your word comfort that we receive and remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We are in the Holy Week. This is the week that we keep in remembrance of the love that God has sacrificed to every child of God and every believer. God gave his only begotten son and a sacrifice for us just because of our sin we are not able to bail ourselves out from dominion of sin we are not able to rescue our life we are not able to set ourselves free praise the lord for him to set us free he has to bring his begotten son to sacrifice for us. Praise the Lord. In the olden days, where it has not been, sin always be pleaded through the sacrifice of the blood of animals. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And yet, it could not settle the iniquities. It could not settle the barrier between us and God. Amen. Amen. There was no grace. There was always only law. And the law is that when you sin, you go and sacrifice the blood of animal. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Actually, it's supposed to be blood of human. Because it is only the blood of human that can wipe off and cleanse you from iniquity. But there is no way you can kill a human being and use the blood of a human being. To do all, to do sacrifice, praise the Lord. So now, because of that, the blood of somebody have to come to finish and complete the assignment of remission of our sins and cleansing of our sins, and that the blood of Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. Amen. So everything was an arrangement of God, just because of the love that God has for us. God loves us. God does not want us to perish because we can only perish through sin. Praise the Lord. Amen. We can only perish through all sin. And because sin has been there as a door for us to be perished. Because sin has been created as a door or as a way for us to be perished. So now, without this sacrifice of the blood of Jesus, there is no way you will escape from perishing. There is no way you will escape from hell fight. There is no way you will escape from judgment. Praise the Lord. And there is no way you will be able to handle it. Because law is different from grace. Amen. So now, when the blood of Jesus came and settled all, you are able to have a second chance. When you read the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 40.
45 to 46. He said, when Jesus died, the Bible said that when he gave up, he said, the veil that covered the temple was torn apart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What does that mean? Veil that covered the altar of holy of holies. It is a veil that bridged between us and God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But because of Jesus' sacrifice, then he taught the veil. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Now you can assess the altar of holy of holies. You can assess the holiness of God and the holy place of God through the grace and the power of the blood. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because you are no more under that law. You are no more under a hand of law. The mark is no more there. The veil is no more there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No more veil. Isaiah said the same thing. He said, the Lord shall destroy the veil that covered the nations. And Jesus came and tore the veil apart. And the veil was spread apart. And during the time of Moses, it was veil that covered them. And that was the reason why they struggled. That was the reason why they suffered. That was the reason why they went through journey of wilderness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because they couldn't make it the standard of God. They could not meet up the standard of God. Abraham's blessing took many years before it manifests. The promises of God to Abraham, it took years before manifestation. Why? Because there was restriction. What is that restriction? See the same veil. Hallelujah. But Jesus came to remove the veil. Now, no more veil, no more restriction. You can speak to God as you want. You can come before Him. And you have every privilege and every asset to His blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You have the assets because the grace has qualified you. Jesus qualified you. And He left grace with you. Hallelujah. Amen. You see how much God loves us. You see how much He loves you. He does not want you to perish. People choose to perish. It's not God that wants them to perish. Because God, He has helped you. He has surprised you. He has made the way for you. Hallelujah. Amen. He has made the way for you. Amen. So now, I want you to begin to digest it in your spirit. This season is a season that you should know that the love of God is very important. Your love for God is very, very old. Important. Many despise and disregard this season. Many do not even think about it. All that run in your mind is how to look for money. How to look for money. And you have been looking for money for many years. Even when you die today, money will not follow you. Nothing will follow you. The Bible says, naked, you came from the dust, and dust as well you shall return to. You came with nakedness. And in nakedness, you shall do what? You shall do. Hallelujah. No, there are things that want more than money, more than anything, more than things we are pursuing. There are things that want more than it. People do not reason anything. They only reason about business and money. Let me tell you, that business and that money will go. And will leave you alone. And you will go. You will leave that business. You will leave that money alone. Hallelujah. I'm not telling you that money is not good. It is good. But there are things that are more valuable than money. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He that gives you life. You know, because what about if death come and knock at your door? Who will you run for help? As Isaiah 23 said in the day of record. Shall you flee for help when disaster will come from afar? For whom shall you call unto? Is it the God that you have rejected? Is it the God you have disregarded? And is it the God which you refuse to show love? 
and who you are hated. Who are you going to come unto? In that day, that disaster will come from afar. Who will you flee for help? And what will you do in that day? People does not think about that. People do not think that it, 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 it only happened just like a thief will come to your door unknowingly. And that's what Jesus said in Revelation. He said, I will come like a thief, surprisingly. And he said, Blessed are those who keep their garment clean. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when it comes surprisingly, and you have given a field, you will make the rapture, you will miss the heaven. So we are living in the days that people do not, are no more recognizing the love of God. If you say you love him, he said, if you love me, look at John, he said, if you love me, keep my word, my commands. There is always an evidence of love. Some of you have wife, you have husband, some have fiancé, you have girlfriend, you have boyfriend. You know how to show love to your boyfriend and girlfriend. You know how to show love to your partners. You know how to prove your love. You know how to care for them. You know how to regularly check on them. You know how to regularly call them on phone, chat them through online. You need to have them daily. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How do you show God your own love? No wonder the Bible said the heart of men are full of evil. The heart of men are full of evil. And people are once cold in their faith. Why? Because of the earthly possessions. Hallelujah. Amen. Because of things of the world. In John 3, 16, he said, he gave his only begotten son. Only. He sacrificed the only begotten son. Just for I and you, he sacrificed. Now, what have you sacrificed unto him? How have you shown the remorse or the love to him that you care and you love him? The giver of life. People are holding the scripture that said that God gives free. He does not need anything for us. Jesus has died for us. He has settled the cause of our sin. You don't need to worry about sin. You don't need to worry anything again. You can say you can live free life the way you want to live. People are holding so adultery. I don't know who is teaching them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible said, God is a holy God. And no eye shall see the law that is filthy. No eye shall see the law that is not holy and that is not righteous. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Now, the place that we're talking about, when you go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 to 7, he highlighted something there. He said, Return with your first love. Return unto me with your word, your first love. He said, otherwise I will remove the last time. You see? I am talking about love for God, passion for God. And many are skipping this area. I don't know how you love God. I don't know how you show God love. But I always remind you one thing. Always remember the heart of men. Their heart are very, very tricky. So you know the way you are relating with God, with your love. You know the way you are showing your love for God. And you know the way you are breaking the love. So today, I remind you to make sure that you stick on the love of God. Now, when Bible talk about Revelation 2, 4 to 7, about love for God, and you should keep in love and return back to your first love. Now, the gospel of John, John was speaking, John the Revelator was speaking, through what the angels of the Lord has ministered to him. And he was speaking to the church. 
who are the judge, I and you. He is still speaking to us. He said, Return back to me with your first law. And that first law is a law of keeping his commandment. That first law is a law of what? Keeping his head commandments. Keeping God's commandments. So today, I am here to make you understand that I'm reminding you about the love for God. What are the signs that you love God? You should know it. Your desire. Your hunger for Him. Your daily activity, your daily fetish. What are the desire? Do you love worldly activities more than the things of God? Do you love your business more than the things and activity of God? Some people will tell you, I went for my business, that's why I could not come to a church, I could not come to prayer. You have forgotten that it is God who gives you that business. Tomorrow night, if the business crumbles, you say, God, why? Hallelujah. You have forgotten that it is God who gives you the source and who gives you the capital. You have forgotten that God is the one who established it. You have forgotten it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the time that the establishment has not come yet, you were committed and you were faithful. But when God visited you, you begin to have excuse. Because you feel that you have arrived. You feel in your spirit that you are a man of your own. You feel that you have a knowledge of your own. You can lean on your own understanding. But my brothers and my sisters, I want you to remember where you have started. That what John was reminding us in the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 4 to 7. Many have lost their love and you need to know where have you lost this love. When you are becoming lazy and weak to follow God. The sign that you have lost the first love. When you are becoming more weak to follow God. Like as many are weak. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I call of some workers who were not here last Sunday. My brother, why is it that you didn't come to our anniversary Thanksgiving? Some of them say they slept off. Some of them say they have an appointment. You know? So I say, my brother, it's a wicked eyes. Because you wouldn't tell me that on Sunday, that is the day of Sabbath, that is the day of worship. The day that you know is a holy day. Check out other religion when they come to the hour and the day of their prayer. Every shot do what? Lost. Every shot lost. Commitment and faithfulness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every place close, all activity close down for that two I and mean three hours. Hallelujah. Amen. See how people respect and honor God. You see how people can show love to God. See the way people value God. They you, you are very trickish. Hallelujah. Amen. No wonder Jesus pointed the Pharisees and the Sadducees. These are the people they claim they know God. And they serve God in their own way. They claim they know God. But they follow their own will. Not what the Bible says or Bible is written. Maybe they have their own Bible. Praise the Lord. Are you loving worldly activities more than the things of God? When they invite you for things of the worldly because there is dream, there are worldly celebrations, you are the first to be there. But when you are invited, to the house of prayer, you are the last to be dead. Why? Because the zeal is no more dead. In 1 John 2, 15 to 17, 
He said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. The love of the flesh, the love of the eye, and the world passes away, the pride of life. He said, It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. Verse 17. And he said, The world passes away, and the love thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Money we go, business we go. The laws of the world we go. Things that are not of the spirit, they will go, they will fade away. Position we go, ranking we go, where we go. But the Bible says, He that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why he said in 125 of Psalm, he said, They that trust in the Lord, they shall be like my Zion, that remain unshakable, but abide in war forever. I was encouraging a brother last Sunday. I said, my brother, if you love God, the place of anything cannot take or take the place of God in your life. If you love God, nothing should take the place of God in your life. Nothing should take the activity of God because these are things that bring mostly struggling in our life. You will see some people who say, I am doing business, but you don't know that it's struggling. There are many things lacking in their life. The Bible says the blessings of God, they are fullness. Good health is there. Fruitfulness is there. Finance is there. Everything, they are all fullness. You have money, but you don't have health. That is not riches. Hallelujah. Amen. You have money, but there are nothing that works in your mind. It is not the uh, presence of God. It is not complete. It is still incomplete. And what brings fullness of blessings of God is fullness in commitment. Hallelujah. Amen. Love the worldly activities. It is time for you to get rid of it. The Bible says in Romans 12, 12, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the ruler of your world, of your mind, or of your spirit. Do not imitate, do not follow the way of the world, because the will of the world is totally different from the will of God. No matter how you try to image it, no matter how you try to combine it, they are totally different. No, but we are living in the day we keep on comparing ourselves with the will of the world. Will of the world. Will of the world. Will of the world. If somebody makes money today, you begin to compete with him. You begin to compare your life with the person, but you don't know where the person is heading to. Hallelujah. You don't know where the person is world is heading to. Pride has taken over. The sign that you have lost the first love, pride. Pride. You see, some people when they don't have anything, they will present us themselves with humility, with the spirit of humility. They remain humble, very quiet, very humble. But when small, small money start coming, if they come to church early, they begin to come to church late because they are man of the law. Praise the Lord. Well, small, small money start coming. If, if it happened to be that they greet you and call you sir, they, they don't call you sir anymore. Because they started measuring high with you. They have no mentor anymore. They have no father anymore. Why? Because just small things start entering inside the pocket. Hallelujah. Amen. They began to tell you that every man have your privacy. Every man is on your own. Why? Just because of money. That money will fade away. Because it's an enemy. The Bible says everything will fade away. But he that lean and trust in him, he that do any will of God, he said, he shall abide forever. He shall abide forever. Pride. He said, he go there before the fall of a man. You may not fall now, 
but he's waiting for you before. Praise the Lord. That is the highest mistake a man should do. When you are poor, you are humble. But when you become rich, pride comes. Remember that life is revolved round about. Just Ferica, it goes around. World comes all, we do all, we come down. Hallelujah. It revolves around. That is why when it revolves to the side that is dark, darkness will come, night comes. When it revolves to the side that is sunny, daytime will do all, we come. It revolves around. It revolves around. You may be getting money. But remember, there will be a season, the money will not come. You see? That's how life is. Why should we be proud? Why should we be arrogant? Why should we be living a life as if that nobody talk to you? Nobody have right to advise you. Nobody have right to say something to you. You know, I begin to see this in the life of the believers. And these are the people I see humble spirit in hell. These are the people I see the spirit of God living inside them. Some of them, when I remember them far back 10 years ago, 7 years ago, 12 years ago, I know how humble they are. How humility they are. And now, me as a pastor, before even I talk to some church members, I need to respect myself very well. I need to be very careful what I will say. Because you don't know Anything you say to them, if you advise them, they will talk to you anyhow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They will talk to you anyhow, I tell you. Why? Because of pride. A father is always a father. As I am, when I call my father, I'm a pastor. When I call my father on phone, the same way he talked to me when I was small, he said the same way he talked to me. And I have to accord that respect to him as well as a father. Father will always talk as well as a father. No matter who you are, no matter your position, father still remember father. Is someone to listen to me? He might talk so rude, he might talk so arrogant, he might talk what he says so challenging and so disgusting. But yet, I still see him as my father. Praise the Lord. Because he is in that office. He is in that position. He has every right to tell me what he wants to say to me. It's not because I'm a pastor now, or maybe because I am more richer than him, or whatever, that I should control my father. Or my father talk to me, I have to turn what he say, I have to turn it upside down. Oh, I'm going to let you know you have no right to talk to me. Praise the Lord. That's me of pride and arrogance. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, sir. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17, it says, But let one who boasts, he said, Let him boast in the Lord. <laughs> For it is no one who commend himself, who is approved, but the one. That is approved. You can get it. Second Corinthians 10, verse 17 to 18. How do we regain back this first love? My brother and my sister, this is the week of love. How do we come back to God with fullness of love? As Revelation has specified this. How do we? It is time for us to return and repent. It is time for us to check ourselves and examine ourselves. It is time for us that the first step. Am I still holding the love of God? Am I still having the passion? Do I still love Him? Do I still have zeal for Him? Or am I still living a good life? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm still living a corny life. One part is Christian, one part is for the world. Hallelujah. No matter you may be hustling in the street, but I tell you the truth, the way of heaven remains one way. The ways of God remain one way. 
and the word of God remains the same, and you cannot change it. Situation may change, but the word of God remains the same. Hallelujah. Amen. It is time for us to turn back. Second Corinthians 13 5, he said, Examine yourself to see whether you are still in faith. It is time for you to do the finding, to check yourself. Am I still having passion for God? Do I still love God? Even in my business, do I still love God? Has God place of my business taken the place of God in my life? These are the things that you need to ask yourself. And it is time to confess and repent. You confess it now. The Bible says in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, it says, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sin may be bloated out. He said, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, that you might also be a partaker of the refreshment. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes when we come back to God, we mean refreshing our spirit. As I said before, this week, you know what the week is all about. It is not a week of living a lustful life, living and enjoying things of the world. It is a week of showing God love, displaying and demonstrating God's love. Remember now that the good things that the Lord has done for you, another way that you can come back, another way that you can regain that love. Remember His goodness. David said, when I remember His love, when I remember His goodness, you see, you are well with joy. When you remember the good things that the Lord has done, David said, he prays and he worships the Lord. Have you taken time to remember the faithfulness of God? Those who are foreigners in the land where you are, since you came, you have not fallen to trouble. Those who are locals, since you joined this commission or since you are set right, God has been helping you. He has been keeping you alive. Do you still remember his faithfulness? Because any time we remember the faithfulness of God, that's the time we return back to His love. That's the time we regain back His love. Praise the Lord. But most of us are forgotten. We are forgotten where we started. We are forgotten where God has picked us and how God has lifted us high above every standard. We are forgotten how God rescued us from death. How God rescued us from sickness. How God healed our sickness. And that was the reason why David in Psalm 103. He said, forget not the benefits. He said, bless the Lord all my soul and all that is within me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Like what I teach last Wednesday, which I said I will continue today. Let me just highlight it so that we pray. Elijah, he first of all repaired the altar. Because why? The children of Israel, they have lost the love for God. They have lost the zeal and the passion for God. And therefore, because of that, there was affliction in the land. But when the time of returning back comes, he repaired the altar. When he repaired the altar, he united all the 12 tribes of Israel and he bring them together. And their sin and all their iniquity was taken off. Praise the Lord. All their sins and iniquity were taken off. Why? Because they have gone away from the ways of God. But now, they have come return back. And that was the reason why when he demonstrated the power of God, fire came down from above. Hallelujah. Amen. Who tell you that the power of God is not no more in action? It is seen that is limiting the power of God to move. And in the sin of a lie, that is what is covering the manifestation of the power of God in our life. You see, repairing what I mean that reconciliation, repentance, coming back to God once again, returning back to Him once again, and that's what God is telling us. Let us return back to that love. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. And I pray that the Lord will go with surround in our life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Lord, we have heard your word from the book of Revelation chapter 2. You say that we should return with our first love. We should return back with that first love. Yes. What is the first love? The love for passion, mm. for hunger, for sin, for worship, for fear of God, for fire, for light. The love that we have that is burning for you, that is burning for you in our heart, in our spirit. The love for commitment, the love for studying your word, for prayer, the word for honesty. For truthfulness and for humility. Father, oh God, here we are today. For this week, we remember what we have done for the world, for us, for our family, for our loved ones. Father, today we return back in the name of Jesus. Revelation 3:20. He said, I stand at your door, and I know if thou shalt open, he said, I will enter. Father, we open tonight. We open our heart, we open our spirit, that you may come in and sweep and stay with us, and that your love may abide with us forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For you are what said that he that dwelt your will. He said, He shall abide there forever. Amen. Father, we want to do your will. Amen. We want to live according to your will. We want to talk according to your will. We want to do things according to your will, Lord. But I therefore we ask that this grace that you have given to us help us to meet up this standard. In the name of Jesus Christ, we we'll receive fresh grace today. In Jesus' mighty name, we declare. Amen. Put your hands on the once again. If you have not prayed, God, let you know what I declare that your blood is offering. As many who have given, Father, in return, may they receive in abundance. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.
Michael and Pastor to come and give us those in prayer. Praise the Lord. Let's give the thank God for His grace and His mercy upon our lives. Let's glorify His name. For if not because of Him, we don't know what would have happened to us. But because of His grace in abundance upon our lives, we are here today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, we thank you for our lives. We thank you, Father, for this ministry. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for our families. We thank you, King of Glory, for all that you have been doing for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you are about to do in our lives. Amen. Father, King of Glory, Holy Spirit of God, we commit the remaining days of this week into your mighty hand. We commit the remaining weeks. Father, O oh King of Glory, into your mighty hand. We commit the entire 2021 into your mighty hand. Father Lord Jesus, we pray that may you continue to protect us, may you preserve us, may you provide for us, may you favor us, may you bless us, may you heal us, Father, King of glory, in our spirit, in our body, in our soul, in Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord Jesus, we cover everyone here with the blood of Jesus. We cover our homes with the blood of Jesus. We cover our houses with the blood of Jesus. Our businesses, our career, our ministry with the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. May your holiness cover us. May your holiness keep us. May your holiness protect us. In thy name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. May the peace and the love of God be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 